Hi everyone, I'm Kiki Halbert. Welcome to Scrapbooking from the Heart for the month of April. This month the ladies and I are working on Renew as a theme. So let's get started. So I'm not going to bore you with all of the um, details of uh, cropping my photos or backing them onto this cardstock, but I did want to show you that the cardstock that I'm using for this is Coordinations um, cardstock that is textured with polka dots. And I'm giving myself a fairly wide border for a reason because I do want some of that texture to show. And I'm also going to be covering up a lot of the paper um, that I'm going to be using because I don't really want the entire design of the paper to show through. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so while you're watching me do this, I just wanted to let you know as well that in the description box there's a, a group of talented ladies that join me every month on this hop um, and it's a hop that is focused on getting you to think about a word and incorporating that in your scrapbooking either in your journaling or uh, maybe as a jump off point um, for photos that might you might otherwise not have uh, scrapbooked and so this month with the month of renew um, what I did is I focused on my photos that of a recent walk that my husband and I took and we um, during COVID it was really important I think to document this because it's been over a year now that we have been um, in some form of lockdown or another and we really needed to get out of the house I'm starting to get cabin fever it's really starting to take its toll and so my husband and I decided we needed to start getting out again um, and at least going for walks um, together, um, hopefully isolated places. Um, but there's plenty of places around where we could go walking. And um, so I wanted to document this nice walk because it really did, to me, mean renewing. Um, we renewed our commitment to get outdoors when we can. Um, instead of sitting inside, and also um, a commitment to um, doing things together um, and spending time on things together. Um, it's very, I'm in a very different situation, maybe some of you are in it as well, where I work at home and my husband is working outside the home right now. And so when he gets home, he kind of wants to spend his weekends relaxing. So getting out isn't always our first priority and but now with covid we realize um getting that fresh air getting um into a changed environment can not only help me with my anxiety and depression but also um, help us together as a couple so uh, that's why i went with these photos for renewal so um what does renew or renewal mean to you um in terms of of um, how we're going through the whole COVID pandemic have you know you play along with us um, and think about scrapbooking some photos that that show that there's you know there's a progression to this that things are getting better and there are ways to renew our energy renew our minds even though uh, we're not in a great situation so I'm just playing around with my photos um, you saw me move them around I'm do, I'm kind of going for a pinwheel um, kind of an effect. Um, I initially didn't want um, the pinwheel to be quite so close together, uh, but because I want these, I have these large uh, borders around the photos, I, um, I changed things up a little bit. So, you know, I had some die cuts and stickers that I turned into die cuts, um, using a anti-static mat or an anti-static pouch um, so that I can move them around and initially I thought I was going to use them um, you know where down at the bottom there that you see um, I'm going for the centerpiece as sort of the focus I guess you can kind of say it's kind of the title of the the layout but um, I changed up my mind a little bit because I do want there to be quite a bit of journaling on here so some of the die cuts that I had set aside that I thought I was going to use, I just, I decide not to at all. Um, because I do want to leave quite a bit of space to explain the reason for scrapbooking these photos and uh, what they mean to me. 
so I'm going to focus on my bottom cluster first. Um, I have some ideas about what I'm going to do there. And so I'm going to do that first so that I can journal around the cluster, um, but keep as much space as I possibly can there. And you'll see that I'm going to use a variety of uh, glues with this. I was just having a glue disaster when it comes to <laughs> this layout. Um, I started off with using some Helmar Quick Dry Adhesive. Then I tried to use my needle um, glue with my Quick Dry. And that didn't work. So you'll see me going back and forth from glues. And um, we all know what a disaster that can be when you end up running out of adhesive or your adhesive isn't working or isn't running properly. So it happens to the best of us. Um, so you'll see that here where I'm playing around with the glues quite a bit. So um, this kit, if you haven't seen it already, it is uh, Simple Stories, Simple Vintage, Simply Vintage Great Escape Collection. And I've used it before. You've probably seen it in other videos of mine. Um, I might link you up to uh, at the top to one of the videos using this kit previously uh, with some mixed media. And um, so for this one, um, what I like about it is that it is perfect for outdoor photos. They're not necessarily hiking, aren't necessarily camping. It's got unusual kind of photos um, or die cuts, I should say. Um, it uses mushrooms and ferns and dragonflies and moths instead of your usual, you know, um, butterflies and flowers and birds and things. Uh, so now that I've got my first cluster down, at least the, the start of it, I'm going to actually journal um, on my layout so that I fit things around the journaling. And you'll see that I'm using a close to my heart journaling pen. This is a 0.1 black. And uh, I really like that. I have quite a few pens that I love, um, but I always found that some of my pen, I don't know, that, that seems to be the one I think that I like the best is that the point one. So I'm done my journaling there. And now I'm going to focus on just building some clusters around the page. I kind of like the idea of doing a cluster at the top corner and then also uh, doing one on the side to cover up some of that paper layering that you see with the butterfly and everything. You'll see some of it, which is fine. Um, I don't hate it per se, um, but I don't want to have that sort of as the layering. I'm going to put some actual dimension there. Um, I do like that that Simple Stories has been doing pages that look like they have layering on them already. That makes it really easy for people to have really gorgeous papers with just, or gorgeous layouts with just like maybe a photo and a few, uh, a journaling card, a title, and, um, and that, you know, that works. Um, I'm not a real fan of the layers keeping them as they are because I just find that they're very flat looking. They don't have, you know, the shadows and things. They're a good jumping start though for people who are just not used to layering a lot of um, products. So, you know, if you haven't tried it already and you're kind of dabbling with mixed media and trying a variety of papers, layering behind your photos, things like that, go for it. Um, this is a good kit for that. <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to start layering um, some of these mu um, mushrooms here on the side and get some of that covered up. And I'm, I'm really going to be playing around with it quite a bit. Um, some of it I'll be um, putting on foam tape to pop it up. Some of it I'll be gluing down. Uh, just to get all kinds of different layers of dimension with this. And um, I've lately, you know, it's funny because when I started doing my YouTube videos, I was using a lot of the, the 3M adhesives, the little squares and things. Lately, I've been really um, relying a lot on my close to my heart um, foam tape because I can just cut the sizes that I need. And I find it really easy to tear off the backing of some of it. Um, but I, uh, 
you know, sometimes I, I kind of, I go back and forth and I'm thinking like, you know, I need to have uh, different things, different, I guess, adhesives in my arsenal. Um, what's your favorite type of adhesive to use in terms of popping things up? I've seen people use, and I have used it in the past, craft foam sheets and cutting it to size um, so that, you know, you're covering more of your um, die cut with foam to pop it up. I've seen people using uh, dots, um, foam dots and foam tape, of course, uh, foam squares. Um, but I'm really sort of interested in finding out um, what there is out there in terms of the different options for uh, different heights and um, also to find out as well which ones really stick well. The thing that I don't like about the craft foam is that of course one only one side is adhesive um, so you do have to glue it onto whatever you're backing um, so that's you know it's going to stay but only as long as your other adhesive is working really well um, and I've had problems with it in the past so I think that's probably why I'm staying away from the foam and the craft foam. But I do want to have a variety of adhesive um, in my arsenal. And I'm looking for some ideas on that. Um, here's one of those nice little uh, layered, it's a pre-layered die cut. Um, and so it just adds a little something uh, to that uh, corner without being too bulky. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to use this little butterfly. I just, or sorry, it's a moth. Um, I'm going to add him over there to just add some color. Um, one thing that I find that I really enjoy about this kit is the colors are completely different from what I would normally use. Um, I don't normally uh, lean toward green and orange and yellow. And um, so this is really kind of, you know, um, been useful for me because I have a lot of photos that are in the forests or on walks, things like that, that I've used. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I still, when I use this kit, I still kind of want to balance the colors around the page a little bit. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, if, if a, if a collection is really focused on one color, like this one is really, there's a lot of brown and a lot of green. And if you just use those embellishments all over the page, your page can kind of lack direction, I guess you can say, like your eye has nowhere to rest, um, except white space. And I don't wanna have a lot of white space on this page. But what I find is that if you do want the eye to sort of enjoy wandering around the page without feeling like it's too way too busy, is um, use the accent colors for that. So this one here has accent colors of orange and reds because of the uh, moths and some of the mushrooms. And so what I did is you'll see that I've used like the orange tickets to add, um, you know, to, to take the eye through the photo. And then I've added a little bit of orange up in the top right corner as well with the moth. Um, because that way it takes the eye not just from the larger photos but over to the right hand side and the bottom uh, bottom right photo has quite a bit of orange in it so I didn't need to really add anything there because it just kind of you know blends and so I find for myself anyhow that gives the page a little bit more balance the same as um, for my photo of myself alone with my mask on I've put that large cluster there to cover up that layering, but also um, it kind of balances off um, the photo with, you know, with the rest of the page. Like that photo is darker than the other photos, I find. So um, putting the cluster there just kind of um, helps the eye go there, I guess you could say. So I'm going to hold this up. I've used some of the little dots that I got in a, um, an SCT sampler recently and some of the little wood veneer um, stars as well those have come in clusters or in um, samplers before so um, I thought I would add a few of those just because of you know the woodiness um, I really kind of like that so I'm gonna see if I want to add different ones anything more there I've added little dots and things um, just for smaller details 
Um, that's another uh, trick for balancing your page as well as to use large embellishment clusters, but also use smaller embellishments um, to just add little touches of interest. Um, so I think I'm pretty much done with this page right now. I'm going to be using a stamp that I got a while from a while back. It's um, this one's from Studio Calico, uh, just to put the date on the page. And coming up, we're going to have some close-ups. Um, make sure again to video uh, to um, check out the ladies in the description box and watch their videos because they're really talented and they'll have different takes on renewal. And if you enjoyed the video and the few trips, tips and tricks that I've given you, please consider giving me a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Have a good one.